Hello, y'all. So we're back with the Heights, honey. So we darn gonna start off where we left off, honey. We're, they're still at the darn going destruction thing. I still don't know the technical name for it. But, honey, shit already getting darn going heated, honey. So it turns out Marco did try to take my suggestion. But what had happened was... <laughs> Honey, Marco darn gonna try to darn gonna swing better, 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 swing better, 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 swing. Honey, before he can even darn gonna get a good swing in, Marcus darn gonna snatch his darn gonna bat. And I'm like, what the hell y'all doing? And then darn gonna, they darn gonna call themselves trying to break it. So darn gonna, Bron I mean, um, Bronson got a hold of Domain, and Marcus got a hold of darn gonna, um, of Marco. And they darn on tussling and whatnot. Honey, darn on Marco said, bitch, I'm going to get a hold of this motherfucker today. So he said, well, shit, if I can't darn on connect this back with him by way of darn on swinging, bitch, I'm going to toss the shit at him. So he darn on toss and obviously he missed. I was like, child. <laughs> Bless darn on Marco's heart. But I felt darn on bad for him. I was like, shit, I was looking for a darn on good old guy. Hell, y'all had to put Valentine's song on. We about to throw them blows. We about to swing them down. We about to swing them down. Honey, I was ready for a motherfucking girl fight. Y'all go break the shit up. <laughs> okay. But anyways... Yeah, in addition to that, uh, Xavier then comes and calmly darn on escorts his boot. I guess they might be darn on hooking up after all because, honey, he wasn't darn on having it. He was darn on still wrestling out of darn on Marcus' hand, uh, hands or whatnot. But, honey, Xavier just came in and just calmly darn on escorted darn on Marco on out. I said, okay. <laughs> and then, once again, I'm still curious on. How come Domain never tried to get darn on physical with darn on Xavier? Now, this is the hypocrisy. Now, Domain, I need you to answer this shit. Because once again, you darn on call yourself going after darn on Marco, but you don't got the same hostility towards darn on Xavier. And I'm trying to figure out why. Just like with the darn on water throwing, the first, the, with the fussing out the first time. And you didn't mean to throw the water on Marcus. So you say, we'll get to that in a moment. Your issue in gripe was with darn on Marco. Now there's the double standard of you darn on going after darn on Marco physically, but not having that same smoke for Xavier. Once again, it's giving you picking up on the darn on white boy that can't fight, but you ain't having that same energy for your fellow darn on black castmates. But I digress. Um, then they, it was revealed because once again, I'm starting to catch the shows live as it comes on, um, well, as it premieres. So I'm looking in the chat and whatnot. Um, and then between the chat and the confessionals, they saying that Domain wasn't even supposed to be there. So last week I said they came ready for the darn going clap back and for the faces and stuff. But they're saying, well, hell, it wasn't meant to darn going cause no animosity with him. Because they didn't know he, they, they, uh, they was under the assumption that he wasn't even going to be there. So I need to know which is the truth. Was everybody uh, supposed to be there and they found out last minute? Or did they already know that Domain wasn't supposed to be there? Because if Domain wasn't originally supposed to be there, Domain, you can't get away with saying that they was trying to antagonize you with darn going, um, beating your face to a pope on the mannequins. If you wasn't supposed to be there, number one. And then number two, as they was doing it, they didn't darn go and yell for you to darn gonna come see. It was your messy darn on friend, Bronson, that alerted you of the situation. Matter of fact, if Bronson wasn't trying to be a messy queen his damn self, you wouldn't even know that they was beating your face down in the darn going, uh, whatever the room called that you destroy all the stuff. So Bronson, you really started this damn mess, girl. And then if that wasn't darn going bad enough, darn on Marcus and the Bronson's going to say, okay, girl, you need to leave. You doing the most. You tossing bats and shit. I'm looking like, what the fuck? What the hell? I'm like, if this ain't victim blaming at this darn on ugliest right here, this bitch almost darn going to get her behind whooped. 
unsolicited by way of Domain. I mean, Grady, you can say she might have been antagonizing with Dargon, hitting his face with the picture. But once again, if it's true that he wasn't even supposed to be there, and then you was the one that notified uh, Domain of what was going on in the room, it's like, you Dargon egg that shit off. And you said that you was ready to see a reaction. And now you darn gonna got the reaction. All of a sudden, you want the darn gonna act like you above the... See, that's that darn gonna shiny O'Neal shit that I can't stand. Darn gonna stir the pot and hide your motherfucking head. Bronson, I see your cute ass, honey. Honey, I told you, you're my favorite look queen on the show. But girl, even you ain't above approach, honey. Girl, I see you, bitch. You, 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 you messy. You, you darn gonna orchestrate this whole shit right here, girl. I got my motherfucking eyes on you. Because, girl, you want to tell darn on Marco to leave. And then Marco's like, bitch, I got me a drink. And then Marcus motherfucking ass talking about, oh, well, girl, the drink only costs $8.50. Bitch, I don't give a goddamn if it costs 80 cents. And then you want to say, well, you could afford this and that. It's like, girl, I don't give a damn if I had Bill Gates' salary. I purchased my motherfucking drink. It's the principle of it all. I'm going to sip my motherfucking drink. I darn going to get out into a damn fight by way of a bitch who ain't supposed to even be here. You motherfuckers holding me back. And it's like, bitch, you should have got popped your damn self. Because it seems like now you wasn't, you really wasn't doing it out of being mutual. Because I'm trying to put it from... Pump from the perspective of Marco. I can see it from Marco's perspective. It's like, now, wait a minute, bitch. First, you hold me back. You snatched the bat out my hand. And now y'all asking me to leave, though. But y'all darn on still keeping the aggressive there. I can see how darn on Marco feel like, yeah, this, this some fuck shit going on right here. And I want the cast to explain how do y'all justify this bullshit right here. I, for, because from, from the outside looking in, it ain't no justifying this. It ain't no damn justifying it. But I digress. They darn gonna end up having darn going uh Marco get gone. Uh and then darn going Bronson gonna get turned up in the confessional talking about girl, you already got your wig snatched one time, don't get it snatched again. And I'm like, okay, once again, it's the over turned up against the darn go. I feel like Marco girl, they treating you like they did Susie on basketball wise. They treating you as the darn on valley darn on white girl that's easy to darn on punk down and get over on. That's the thing that I'm sensing with Marco. Marco is darn on getting punked down like Susie motherfucking darn on diary of the mouth having ass used to be darn on getting punked down over at basketball wise. Girl, if you don't learn how to do some uh, karate or something, bitch, you be having them darn on eye looks like rah, 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 manada, run up the road. It's like, bitch, you be giving me Lady Gaga and all of these things. Bitch, you need to learn how to do some darn on windmill choreography kick down on they motherfucking asses. Because in that moment, all three of they asses needed they motherfucking ass whoop, honey. Honey, darn on Domain. Bronson and Marcus could have got it. But see, I could understand why Marco fell back because unlike me, who's about that life from the hood, that would have darn gone easily gather all three of their motherfucking asses. See, Marco ain't no fighting girl like that because the moment that bitch darn gonna snatch that hair off, it shouldn't even been enough time for Marcus to even got that motherfucking bat out your hand. You darn gonna spend the whole 30 seconds in other shock, bitch. I wouldn't have been in other shock. I would have had a darn on instant reflex right then and there. Soon as you, when you move, I move just like that. Honey, as soon as that darn on wig darn on got snatched back, honey, your body should have instantly darn on turned like a reflex. Your body should have instantly went just like that, bitch. So, girl, yeah, you, you ain't about that life. What you need to do is get some darn on good Judy's around you for these darn on group of girls that know how to darn on scrap that would have had your darn on back in that moment. Because, girl, I felt bad for you. But, honey, Marco, what well, he lacked in fighting skills, honey, he made up for it in the verbal. Because, honey, he read them motherfuckers down in that damn confessional. I said, oh. <laughs> Y'all done got Marco Dargon turned up now, honey. Marco Dargon is reading the girls talking about, bitch, you Dargon ain't got that comic book Dargon line uh, dealt with yet, yet you want the Dargon jump and be in anybody else. Bitch, tend to your business, Marcus. 
Um, and then Bronson really got the brunt of it. Hell, I think Bronson got it worse off than Domain, honey. But once again, you deserved it. You deserve it. Hey! Yeah, your ass motherfucker deserved that read. Because it's like, girl, you orchestrated that entire bullshit with your shiny, bootleg great value shiny O'Neal having motherfucking ass. You orchestrated that shit. <laughs> he nar uh, uh, It's then revealed that uh, allegedly... Because I don't know where the motherfucker live. But my thing is this. I think they in New York in general. So even if he's not in the Hamptons. They, they say he's many miles from the Hamptons. It's like, well, bitch, the fact that he got a house that size. Honey, it's still a flex move within the damn self, honey. And it's like, well, hell. I didn't necessarily think that the motherfucker was a multi-millionaire. So now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, I, I do believe Marco is right about uh, Bronson lying about being in the Hamptons. So I got to take back my accolades about old boy being, you know, something to look up to. It's like, girl, you up on this motherfucking screen being a goddamn front cream like some of the girls on Love and Hip Hop. This is the life. This is the life, baby, baby. Honey, darn on the girls be acting like they about that life. And then... Come to find out, they darn on struggling just like the rest. Well, middle class struggling because once again, for him to still have a house of that caliber with the basement and everything else, honey, he he got some money. I, I want to say he's like upper middle class. His husband makes probably like two hundred and fifty some thousand, three hundred some thousand dollars a year. Um, I don't see unlike the other folks who might maybe 40, 50. I, I definitely see that, you know, his man probably make a good quarter of a meal, but yeah, he ain't on that Hampton level. I, I thought, bitch, you are going to look up and got you old rich count that makes like a million dollars a year, but honey, according to Marco, that ain't the damn case. But time will tell y'all. Feel free to leave y'all. You know, if y'all want to give the girl some tea on that, y'all feel free to drop down in the damn comments, child. I be looking. But anyways, moving on from that, child. Then we go on to Domain helping Dargon uh, tidy out, blowing up the balloons and stuff for the Dargon release party. And then Tidy considers himself being Dargon uh, Steve Harvey mixed in with the Yana Van Zant. He decides to invite Marco. And I was like, now, okay, production, I'm going to need some time stamps on, because I know damn well that this couldn't have been within no one a day one or two day darn on area i know it had to be some cool cooling time between this so production i'm going to need you to tell me what was the timeline between the borderline fight at the darn one um smash event to darn on tidy's darn on release party because i know that shit had to be like a couple weeks at the minimum because i'll be damned if darn on just yesterday uh, me and you was about to scrap down in the battle room, and all of a sudden now you think we supposed to darn on peacefully darn on converse about this situation? Oh no! And see me, uh, honey, it it, it would have been a few months and me before I even would have been able to get in the same room without even having to be on site. And even then, I might have still would have tried. But then again, they know who to cast for these shows. They know not to cast no real hood bitch like me. With Marco, they say, okay, give, give it maybe a week or two. Because I would have thought that even somebody like Marco still wouldn't have been calm within one to two days. But I could be wrong, child. So they end up going outside. And I'm just perplexed, number one, by the fact that number these two hoes ain't scrapping. Because like I said, something like that, I I, I wouldn't have been able to fight, uh, face nobody like that. that it it would have been on site. But that's just me. But I was just, Marco, I love you, girl. But these fashions be getting me. It's like, girl, now you giving me darn on. It, it, it's giving Elizabeth Taylor mixed in with Kesha, mixed in with Lady Gaga, all wrapped up into a, a universe where they are the female pimpress of the darn on Bronx. It's giving me Bronx darn on pimp goddess tease, honey. I'm like, Honey, darn on Marco and her flamboyant fashion. She, mm, okay. <laughs> but aside from the darn on braids, the darn on the furs and all of that, honey, they get the darn on talking and stuff. And they darn on agree to uh, the squash the beef. 
or whatnot. Um, now, in the midst of them agreeing to squash the beef, I noticed there was some hypocrisy going on. So, first one is, turns out Domain really was playing an integral part behind the scenes with Marco, with helping him with the music. Maybe that's why he, he was darn going susceptible, uh, susceptible to make amends with Domain, considering Domain has been the most helpful. I still don't give a damn. It could have been more darn on folks that you could have reached out into the great city of New York. New York, this is what dreams are made of. Bitch, you could have found somebody else to help you out in the darn on great big apple, motherfucker. Domain ain't the only one with a damn musically inclined damn ear. And then out of everybody's credits, bitch, he ain't even got no background in music. You going to the damn author slash inventor of skincare and hair care for darn on music advice? Who the hell is he? Bitch, he, he, he's from Jamaica, but he ain't no Wale. He ain't no Spice official. Bitch, he don't know nothing other than darn on how to maybe dirty wine and whatnot. But he don't know nothing about the music like that. For, but then again, he might because hell, you darn on... Soaking up all his knowledge like a damn sponge, child, to the point where you willing to darn on uh, reconcile just for the sake of it. But I digress. Um, now, Domain, you was doing a little bit of backpedaling and pussy popping your damn self, girl, because you you did darn on offer up a lie that nobody didn't ask for. And I can't stand when bitches do that shit. It's like, bitch, don't darn on volunteer a lie for me. Now, if I ask and you lie, that's one thing. But, bitch, I did not ask for you to give me that lie. Girl, why you darn on say the drink throwing wasn't meant for him? And it's like, but Ben, when you darn on met up last episode with Marcus, you said that the drink throwing was only meant for Marco and darn on Xavier's ass. Now you in darn on Marco face and you saying that the drink wasn't meant for him either. So the drink was just meant for Xavier. Girl, I need you to get your darn on story together, Diamond. Girl, you was doing a little bit of flip flopping too, baby. But um yeah basically that was that um in regards to them. Honey, they spent so much time out there that we ain't even get to hear the music. Because once again, this supposed to be darn on Toddy's darn on music release party. And it's like, well, shit. We see them darn on doing a little bit of get down on the floor, cutting up the rug just a little bit. But most of that scene was between darn on Marco and Domain. By the time we get in, um, get back into the party or whatnot. Now, what what's going on with over there at darn on Light Media? <laughs> Uh, Tidy, did you not give the darn on production permission to darn on play the music? Because it's like, as soon as they say, okay, let's listen, <laughs> honey, next scene, I was like, well, damn, either the music must have been bad, or and they ain't want the darn on showcase the horribleness and do Tidy wrong. They might have low-key been giving Tidy a solid. Or... I swear these walls are too thin, y'all. It's damn 6 o'clock at night. Why those children over there ain't in the damn house? Done threw off my whole train of thought. But like I was saying, either the music was bad and they was doing Tidy a solid, which I highly doubt because from what we heard from the first time, honey, he darn on Tidy got old nasty, sick of them flow, honey. So that obviously could not have been the case, but it could have been 5%. Um, the other situation is Tidy might have darn on said, bitch, Honey, y'all y'all don't have to darn on pay for this. Even though y'all promoting the hell out of me on this show, we, we didn't know about you beforehand. Bitch, you ain't no Safari Stray. You ain't Nikki. You ain't none of the darn on folks that's already been put on. Bitch, this ain't love and hip hop. This is motherfucker like me on YouTube. So I'm trying to figure out why in the hell the music wasn't played. Was it clearance wasn't given by the darn on songwriter slash artist or whatnot? So... Uh, yeah, I, I need to know why y'all cut off from the song. Is that just me? I don't know. But anyways, moving on. So now we go to Domain conversing with his friend um, um, Wade or whatnot. So Wade was at the party when shit went off and he's still salty with Domain for acting ratchet at Dargon Bronson's house that I guess is a hundred miles away from the Hamptons. <laughs> from what I was hearing because honey the, like I said the darn on chat is a show within the damn show honey 
Darn on you. I, I was seeing all the comments all throughout that episode. <laughs> Honey Marco was going in, child. But um, yeah. They was conversing about that. In addition to the book that supposed to be um Atonement of Innocence, I believe the name of the book is. Uh, the first cover was supposed to be dark, reddish, black, but they said it was a bootleg of power. And y'all know, honey, Fifty Cent, he he does not, he's not opposed to suing the girls, honey. Y'all see, he's still darn on is going after Tierra Marie after all these damn years. So it's like, yeah, girl, darn on Fifty Cent is an old petty darn on Butch Queen, honey. I know she looked like she's trade, but motherfucking Fifty. Honey, we knew all the way back when she was hugged up on darn on Soldier Boy, honey. That, honey, she was a darn on uh, mask butch queen, baby. So, yeah, you know how them butch queens operate, honey. They 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 petty as fuck, so I don't mind. <laughs> you know, yeah, change, it was in your best interest to change up that cover. The other cover looked it nice or whatnot. Um, in the midst of the episode, I was darn on nosy to look at the price. I said, okay, I look like I'm about to spend a good $15, $20. Okay. Uh, but surprisingly, honey, good price point. I even though I was willing to toss you $15, $20, no more than that. But um, his book is currently on Amazon for $8.63. It's currently in my uh, wish list. Uh, well, I don't know why I call it the wish list because I don't never share the shit. And it's really darn on um, a list that I save for purchases that I'm going to make later, uh, which I'm actually going to make that either tonight or tomorrow. So by the time we get next week's episode, I will already have the book. And because y'all know I'm a proud Prime member, honey. So I'm going to have that book within two days. Shout out to him being partnered with Prime Shipping. And honey, we're we going to darn on look at the uh, book and whatnot. So by the end of this, series season or whatnot because i think y'all might have 12 episodes by that time i should have gone and looked into the book a little bit and give y'all my thoughts on the book so domain you got a girl you got a purchase over here and i'm going to give my honest darn on thoughts on the book to see if you darn on finally toned it down because <clears throat> when we was first introduced to you we was hearing that the book idea was all over the place. He was giving us six different stories and once that was meant for like a total of a series of books. So let's see if you was really able to be successful and learn on bring all the things together in a nice cohesive manner. So moving on from that, um, that was basically it y'all. Um, then we get a weird cutoff scene where the girls were sitting at the table and Bronson was asking Darn on Marco about cultural appropriation with the braid. And y'all know that's up in my alley. Y'all know a girl like to talk a little bit of social justice issues and shit. Uh, I'm not even going to do a certain somebody this episode. I told y'all motherfucker was going to have us wait until damn near St. Patrick's Day for me to review that sh uh, th that show again. You know who I'm talking about. We're still waiting, honey. <laughs> but anyways, as far as this show is concerned, uh, we got a weird cutoff where it looked like the girls was at the table and they was asking Bronson. I mean, uh, Bronson was asking Dargoyne, Marco about cultural appropriation. I was like, oh, Lord, here we go with this shit. But I, I, I could understand to a certain extent because it's like, okay, the braids is a culturally... You know, the type of braids could be perceived as a black hairstyle. Um, but I, I will hold my thoughts on that until next week. Um, then they darn on sliced in the full... So I'm thinking that somebody just fucked up on the editing floor on that. And accidentally put that scene in too early because then we flip on to it saying next week on, you know, the heights. And then we get the full context of everything, um, the snippets and whatnot. But that is it. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll be back here next week with episode eight.